Welcome to the Geniuses of Copywriting Podcast, a peek into the minds and strategies of the world's greatest copywriters, marketers, and persuasion experts. And now, here's your host, Brian Cassangina. Hi guys, welcome back to the Geniuses of Copywriting Podcast. I've got here a really interesting guy on the call today, a very special guest by the name of Chris Wright. He's a copywriter who I've seen around the traps in the the world of copywriting for a while now. Um, And what really caught my interest, um, and it's one of the reasons why uh, I asked him to come on the show, is because he's writing um, uh, and having success with uh, some offers on cold traffic. And and as some of you know, you know, that's one of the things that that I'm focusing on. I've I've, uh, got my own offers that that I've got up in uh, selling directly uh, from ads. And this is one of the things that I'm telling people they really need to focus on because uh, like I was saying uh, just before a minute ago, Chris, you know, uh, before we started, uh, you know, a $7 or $20, $50 um, uh, customer on the front end is worth a lot more than somebody signs up for a free report. So but Chris, thanks for coming on the call. I really appreciate it, man. How are you? I'm great. Always uh, been a big listener of the show. So really happy to be on. Appreciate that, man. Yeah. Um, uh, happy to have you, have you uh, as a guest because I know you've got a lot to offer. Um, like I was saying, you know, uh, one of my focuses is, is getting stuff to convert on cold traffic um, and the many ways we do that. But, uh, but uh, I was wondering how you got started uh, doing that in particular. How, how did you get your start in copywriting? Um, how did you get into the, uh, the area? And uh, how did you start to uh, write these uh, promotions for cold traffic? Yeah, so I guess I've always been quite quiet online, never really shared this kind of intro story, but it all started when I was a kid and basically wanted to run my own business, be my own boss, have all that freedom. I was the kind of guy that that went to these kind of drunk holidays in on Greek islands, uh, oh, yeah. like drinking in the night, and then all day <laughs> long with my hangover, I'd sit by the pool with a business book instead of you know, being my mates. Um, yeah. So yeah, from there, I just tried to open a few, like, uh, I remember one had, one was using persuasion techniques to sell specific dish, dishes in restaurants or upsell into desserts and just essentially increase the AOV of um, you know, people in the restaurant. Uh, that's, another that's one was, yeah, yeah. Another one was basically being a middleman for people in certain African countries who weren't allowed to buy from Amazon, but Amazon could ship there. So okay. you would, yeah, you would purchase. I'd, I kind of realized that would never work when someone asked me to send them a 500 grand Rolls Royce plane engine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I mean, this was, be- this was before I even knew what margins and everything like that was. Yeah. Um, definitely was never going to work. But yeah, I, I mean, I was, still, I was still a kid at the time. I was living at home with my mum and dad. Um, and I'd always kind of been a fast hyper, mainly because of computer games. Like if you didn't type fast in Counter-Strike or, or anything like that, then you'd, you'd get shot and you'd mm. die. Um, so I turned to, to freelancing sites to start writing articles. That's where I saw money start to come in. And I was writing literally anything I could. So uh, I remember Indian, I was writing articles about Indian restaurants uh, and their staff retention. I remember writing about Karma Sutra sex positions, like for an app. Yeah, uh, yeah I did. I took anything I could. Um, and I guess from there, I then discovered the Warrior Forum. And I realized that money, the money in writing was writing to sell stuff, writing copy. So I started doing that. I got a bit of success in make money online, erection stuff, you know, a very broad range of topics that mm. um, I did that for maybe, maybe a year. And then I went to the Titans of Direct Response event that Brian Kirst oh, put yeah. on. Yeah, it's pretty much. Yeah, amazing show, show, right? And I pretty much spent every penny I had to, to go there. Um, and I, the one big takeaway I got from that was seeing Ken McCarthy on stage, and he listed kind of three big niches. He said financial, because everyone always needs more money. Health, because everyone will always get aches and pains. And relationships, because everyone always wants to get laid. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that's why they're the big money niches, right? And I mean, that's still true to today. And it's always stuck with me. And at the time, my mentor was Roy Fur. He was in the financial niche and or niche. Um, and I just like yeah, the idea I just of, say niche now. Yeah, it's easier. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I like the idea of, of financial. I'd followed Motley Fool 
over here in the UK. Um, and yeah, so then since then, and that was kind of the snowball moment since then I've worked with or been formally mentored by some amazing writers, including Dan mm. Ferrari, Mike mm. Morgan, to name a few that have you know, been past guests of yours. Mm. Um, mm. I've written for a lot of the big financial publishers inside and outside of Agora. I also got into health, uh, where again, I've written for a lot of the big health marketers inside and outside of Agora. And now I'm launching my own supplement offer alongside uh, an amazing business partner I've got, while also actually um, mentoring a lot of kind of really high caliber copywriters. Yeah, so you started off writing articles on these freelancer sites and and now you're um, working with, with the gurus and, and uh, uh, having all these amazing results with the copy that you've written. So, um, so I mean, that, that's one of the things that I was interested in, you know, uh, how far you've come so fast. Um, do, you, do, you, do you, like, um, I mean, it sounds like you just you just you just talked about a twenty year career th- there. So, uh, I mean, do you have a um, do you have a secret that, that you've used, or or a strategy, or a mindset that uh, um, has helped you move ahead um, uh, reasonably mm. quickly? Because I mean, I mean, it's like I started copywriting in in two thousand and three, and it took me like uh, ten years to actually get anywhere. It's, um, you know, uh, you know. You know, I was stubborn and, and uh, you know, uh, didn't want to do what worked. So I thought I could make everything up. That was one of, one of my early problems. And I uh, eventually got the right mentoring and and uh, uh, it took me about 10 years to a point where I could actually uh, uh, start working for the man. So what, what has led to uh, uh, your success um, mm-hmm. in a reasonably short frame of time? Well, yeah, anyone that asks me knows I just talk about mentoring and how valuable that has been. Every time I've gone to the, the next level, it's been through mentoring. But the one kind of big secret in there is, I don't recommend this for everyone, it's very easy to do when you're 18, 19, without any kind of kids, mortgages, any any commitments. But I always made sure I had uh, a, a small amount, amount enough of money that made me kind of scared. It, it lit a fire under my ass. Like I had to, you know, I had to get another client. I had to perform well because if I didn't, I wouldn't, wouldn't have any money. Um, and so that, yeah, that really lit a fire under my ass. And so I, I would spend pretty much all the money that came in. I would spend on mentors, on courses, on learning, um, and a fair amount on, on coffee because I'm a coffee snob. Uh, and then, you know, eventually. You felt like, like it's a bad thing. <laughs> yeah no it, it it got that way but i've uh, i've had to rein it in but yeah eventually and eventually as i say i don't recommend that if you've got commitments but eventually the money coming in overtook the amount i could spend on mentoring and everything like that mm. um and it paid off big time it, it forced me to get good really quick it forced me to understand the business as well because you know it's one thing to be able to write copy it's another to be able to understand the business of copywriting yeah exactly and yeah, so I mean, if, if you're in a position where you have very low financial, uh, you know, uh, things to spend on, then I, yeah, I would recommend just investing as much as you can in, in learning and mentoring and kind of make yourself a bit scared to, to not perform. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's really, um, <clears throat> and this is why I like uh, other copywriters and direct marketers so much. That, this, that's like the opposite of the financial advice that, of the, <laughs> the the very the little tiny amount of financial advice that uh, that we were taught growing up, you're, you're supposed to save up money and have a nest egg and, and have that security, but um, mm. but uh, that with that uh, comfort can come complacency. So um, oh, exactly. Like, and I, I th- yeah yeah. Well, I tend to think of copywriting as a, a hockey stick graph anyway, mm. um, in all parts. So. You know, you might you might be spending all your money on mentoring and learning, but that will pay off massively two years from now. Yeah. It's same with promos. Um, you know, you write while well, you're learning, you'll write a ton, which you know might do okay, but then they'll start to, you'll start to really hit some winners. Um, and then even then, when you're writing consistent winners, there's going to be some of them which are just outrageously profitable. Yeah. 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 Um, 
Yeah, it's it wasn't like I was saying um, a bit earlier. You know, it wasn't until I got the right mentor and where um, uh, things really took off for me. You know, that that was one of the keys for me. So uh, that's definitely very important. Mm. Yeah, no doubt. So, um, uh, so what? Can you tell us about some of these uh, uh, cold traffic promos you've written? And this is like you know. A, a, like a personal interest of mine, you know, I want to, I wanted to, um, yeah, see it and see if I could draw out to, uh, as much, as much, uh, uh, free information as I can in, in half an hour to, uh, um, uh, to, to sort of, uh, add to my toolkit as well. So I've got a really, a really, uh, personal interest in finding out, um, what are some of the things that you've done, um, to, uh, convert on cold traffic? Because, uh, for, for those people who are listening to the show who haven't uh, um, you know, uh, written a lot of stuff and had a lot of success yet, um, uh, getting a, an offer to convert on cold traffic is the hardest job of all. Like, like people post on, on Facebook and and, uh, and mail to their lists, their house list and all stuff like that, and and uh, and make sales that way. But that's warm traffic. That's that's people who are already warmed up and who know you. Um, uh, to get a person who's scrolling through Facebook, for example, to, to, uh, um, to uh, stop what they're doing, notice your ad, go to your website uh, and buy something, whip out their credit card and buy something the first time they see you is the hardest job of all. So, um, so if, if you're uh, planning on writing in this area, just know that you know, that's a challenge you've got in front of you. So what, what are some of the things that, that you can name that you've done um, you know, to, to get these results on cold traffic specifically. Yeah, I mean, I'll quickly add to that as well. It's not just, you know, we're not asking them always to just spend $7. They might end up spending $200 with us yeah. from complete. And that is a, that's an amazing skill set to have. But um, I mean, the big, kind of the big two that people in our circle generally know that I've written are Lift Factor and Bioharmony. Bioharmony mm. in particular is well on the way to being an eight-figure promo. Um, yeah. And so I guess we'll use that as an example when we go through. Mm. So I kind of, I look at, aside from having good fundamentals of a promotion, right? Like you've got the clothes, you've got the guarantee, uh, you're using enough proof, all the fundamentals are in there. What makes a promo work on cold traffic instead of just being something you send to warm traffic? Um, and really to me, it, there's two components. There's firstly novelty, you're, you're telling them something completely new, something that they've never heard or seen before. Mm. And that's important because we know that a buyer is a buyer is a buyer. So people that buy yeah. financial newsletters buy more financial newsletters. People that buy yeah. supplements buy more supplements. I mean, most people probably buy supplements and have a, a closet full of them. I know I do. So <laughs> they've, they've seen everything, right? They've seen the marketing. You just have to assume that. So I tell them something new and generally that comes from the second component of what I think makes cold traffic work. And that's storytelling. I know mm. you've had guests on here talk about the importance of storytelling before. I know that when mm. I was a, a newer copywriter, I was like, learned, like people were saying how important uh, storytelling is. And I'd go into Amazon and I type in storytelling book in the bar and I'd buy like the top three that came up. But yeah, that's, that never kind of worked for me. I feel like everyone has a big aha moment when it comes to storytelling. And for me, that came from, uh, there's a chap called Ron Howard. He's a big director, Da Vinci Code, Rush, A Beautiful Mind, and he's got a masterclass. Hmm. And, um, you know, he talks, about, he talks about the main components of, the, of a storytelling structure, because I know that's what a lot of people want to hear about. And he says one of the most important points is momentum. So it's basically, I'm looking for, and how do you build momentum again through that compelling story, telling it in, a, in the most compelling way, um, getting away from the central track here. But okay, so let's say two parts of a story, this compelling story, and you're telling it in the most compelling way. We use Bioharmony as a, a good example. The compelling story here is the overarching theme. So in Bioharmony, that's a story of a woman not being recognized at her high school reunion right? And then we, yeah. we need to figure out a way to tell that in the most compelling way. 
And this is where the momentum comes into play. This is all the little bits that make up the actual story. So you've got the really embarrassing, shameful moment. You've got the redemption arc. You've got discovering the doctor, using the product, having an amazing um, you know, response to it. And those two parts, they make up these, these really powerful stories that, that work in cold traffic along, along with the novelty. And so yeah. that's kind of what I, yeah, go on. No, I was, I was thinking to you. Okay, so yeah, and so you've got those two parts, a compelling story, telling it in the most compelling way. Uh, hopefully it's a new story as well, because that, you know, people, people like novelty, people like things they've never seen before. Yeah. So when it comes to the storytelling, it's, it's not really enough to, you don't want to write it like a, a fantasy novel. And that's something I used to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to write like I was Brandon Sanderson and, and you know, using a lot of descriptive language and that kind of thing. You want it to, you want it to be descriptive enough, but you also want it to really flow. We're talking about momentum. And yeah, so that's yeah. how, I, how I compose my promos now. I don't use outlines, I don't use templates. Once I finish a block of copy, I ask myself, what has the most momentum to write next? And then I'll write that. And so, again, like to, to explain how powerful storytelling is to cold traffic. Nowadays, I don't write a promo, um, you know, trying to build a story around the pain points, the lived experiences, all the stuff you've got to get in that first 10 pages of a promo. Yeah. I write the story and then try to find the best way to fit those things, the pain points, the lived experiences, the dispelling of uh, objections and other, other products they've tried before. I try to fit all that into the story without slowing down the pace. Mm. But the, again, like I've heard guests talk about this before and I cannot you know, underestimate the, the importance of it you can only really craft a really compelling story if you have a deep, super deep understanding of your audience. You mm. need to know what, what makes them tick. What, what is their pain point? What is the, what they're going through on a, on a day to day time frame with, with their, with their problem. And, you know, I, I see a lot of guys at the moment, they're trying to write copy as quickly as possible. And yeah. that's great if, if you've been a while, around a while and you're intimately familiar with the market. But if you're not familiar, you really need, like it's not enough to just do half a day of, of research on, on that audience and what they're feeling and what their day-to-day -day is. You've got to get past that surface layer and that's how you really connect with the prospect. And that's why I think my programmers do really well because I will spend you know, two, three, four, five days getting into the headspace of of the prospect yeah. yeah yeah so that's really important i mean it's like uh, um <clears throat> you know about the you know the R rmbc method of stephen georgie um which mm -hmm. is a course that i've got as well and you can find out more about that course if you find stephen georgie's um episode on uh, geniuses of copywriting.com his author so there he talks through he goes deep into that uh, uh, uh method, rmbc methodology which is really valuable so but that research uh phase uh, that's 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 a very good point that you bring up you know um because i've got my few uh niches that i write for like uh, uh biz up or um or uh self-improvement and a couple others which i can um i know the uh the target market uh, very much in depth but you know when a, a client from outside that area um you know, if I get interested in their projects, you know, I have to uh, build in a couple, uh, probably a couple more weeks sometimes uh, into the project just so I can learn about that market and get, get uh, the inside knowledge that, uh, that, that, and then you, then you write fast. That's the fast part. Like you, you spend, uh, you know, uh, five weeks on, on, on the research and, and the thinking, and then you, you write the thing in a week. So that, that's, that's where you get the fast writing from. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like, I feel like people need permission right now, to be honest, to, to know that it's okay to take a month, two months, even three months to yeah, write a program, yeah. especially if it's in a, a niche niche you've never written before in before. Mm. Um, exactly. I guess, so I hope, I hope that made sense. I know, I know I fumbled that a bit, but the, no, big, no, it's, it's really good. <laughs> yeah. The big, the big takeaways really are the storytelling. You have a compelling story and you figure out how to tell it in the most compelling way possible. The way you do yeah. that, you know, is through knowing that audience. Um, 
And actually, while we're here, one of the big game changers for me, aside from that Ron Howard moment where he talked about your story structure being about momentum, uh, the big one of the big things for me was starting to read fantasy and fiction in general. Mm. Um, and I mean, I'm talking about like wizards and witches and, and all sorts of, of crazy stuff. But there's a lot of very, very good authors that move stories along very quickly um, through in, in fiction. And I don't know about you, Brian, but when I was, you know, a few years back, I wouldn't read fiction because I'm like, I'm not yeah, wasting yeah. my time. I, I want to learn everything. Um, but, yeah, 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 you want to you want to read business books, not fiction. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> that, that's exactly. what I used to think too. <laughs> and so, yeah, reading fiction has been amazing, but it kind of it, it does ruin the books a bit because you're like you'll sometimes you'll be like thirty pages in a really good reading session, and then you'll stop and you'll see like, oh, how how have they how have they structured that sentence or, yeah, or yeah, that yeah, part yeah. of the story? So it takes <laughs> you out of the story a bit. But no, it's like that's you know these guys are selling millions of books. And there's mm. something to learn there in storytelling because that's all we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm just trying to think of the guy. Um, uh, Todd Brown told me about some author that, uh, uh, that that writes these crime novels, and I can't remember who it is now, so it probably doesn't matter. Would it be? Uh, yeah. Well, um, one guy is Jim Butcher, who writes the Dresden Files. And mm. I know I know one very very good copywriter who who every copy cub you know junior copywriter what whatever you want to call them that works with them has to read this group of books, and it's because Jim Butcher just moves the story along extremely quickly. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But without but but he's not he's not missing out on details. He's still painting a very vivid picture for you in there. So I yeah I mean if there's a big takeaway I would recommend anyone read the uh, Dresden Files. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely going to um, look that up after after we get off the line here. So, um, you know, that sounds that sounds perfect. You know, if he's uh, if he's writing succinctly, um, you know, moving the story quickly, but not uh, you know missing out on the emotional impact, um, that's exactly the sort of writing we should be shooting for. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, that is a a wizard private investigator in Chicago. So, you know, it's a yeah, recipe yeah. for for a great read. <laughs> yeah, there's these uh, um, uh, fiction and, and Hollywood movies and screenplays and stuff like that. So, um, uh, that's something I've also been learning about from uh, a business partner I have in, in, with my offer. Um, he is a former screenwriter from, from New York and, and uh, you know, he's, uh, um, he's done tons of stuff and he knows all the, the story arcs and, and uh, uh, everything that goes into, into writing a, a successful script. And, uh, you know, he's, uh, um, uh, the way that he writes his copy and he's not primarily a copywriter by any means, but, uh, but the way he, he comes up with stories is, is really amazing. He, he's got that, that, that momentum to his stories. So, um, that, that's yeah. really a key word. No, I, yeah. Momentum is everything, but I, I was having kind of this conversation that the people I study now really on copy, um, are screenwriters. It's Aaron Sorkin, mm. it's Ron Howard. They've all got master classes. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, they they have to move stories along very quickly because people are paying to be there. Uh, and they, you know, how they make money is, is good reviews. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the other, the other um, uh, thing I've what started watching for, um, to, to learn story writing is, is like, uh, it's one of those old eighties cartoons, you know, you've got 20 minutes to, to take a bunch of characters through a, uh, a story. And uh, that's, that's when you have, your writing has to be tight and, and uh, bring the reader along without losing any impact. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I've heard a, another copywriter who's way more into music than I am um, talk about how songs are just copy. It's three minutes to tell a story. You know, everywhere you look, you'll see stories. And this is why they're so great. This is why they work on color traffic because humans love stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's really one of the big keys. And, and uh, I mean, when I read the, um, when I read the Bio Harmony Salads page, that was what really stood out for me. It's just one big long story. Um, yeah, nobody, uh, 
go through a website to, to read a bunch of information, um, you know, unless they want to know how many calories are, are in a potato or something, you know, uh, they go there, they go there because of the story They get drawn in from the ad that, that teases the story. And then when they get to the website, they want to be entertained. They want, they want to, um, what they're looking for is some reason to, to click off of that web page and go back to what they're doing. So, um, if you have, if you uh, hook them up in a story, then, uh, that's one of the, the key ways to bring them down to the bottom of the page uh, and get them to buy. Yeah, I totally agree. And I mean, I'm working on a pretty cool story right now in a, in a promo. It's a bit top secret, but yeah, <laughs> look out for that one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure to be around the place because we're, we're in the same groups on Facebook, like oh, yeah. uh, Justin Goff and Stephen Georgie's group and uh, we're in the, in the membership and, and stuff like that. Mm. So i um, looking forward to that. Um, uh, so, um, is there anything else that, that, any piece of advice that you could, uh, uh, give to people who want to take on, take up the challenge of, of writing promos and sales pages for, um, for cold traffic? Yeah. So this is, we were talking before the call about how I'm mentoring people now and I'm seeing kind of commonalities between them and, and you know, things that could be improved. And so what a lot of people tend to do when they're writing a promo is that they swipe quite hard. Everyone's done it. Um, you know, and it's a good way to get good, especially if you're newer. But I think what makes a difference, especially when you're literally in the hardest arena there is, you know, you're, you're literally in the Colosseum in Rome with cold traffic. I think uh, what people need to do is look at what's working and not just copy it, but with a different story, but think, think, how can I beat this? What can I add? You know, is it credibility? Is it uh, more drama in the story? Is it more emotion, more emotional language, more understanding of their lived experience and, and the pain points, or perhaps it's something they can remove. So, you know, does this story, you know, this promo is working amazing, but the story is, kind of going around in circles or it's not a straight line or, you know, can things be removed? So instead of just looking at what's working and trying to emulate it, look at it, emulate it, but also improve on it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that, uh, it's that mindset, which, uh, um, will drive you to success. Um, uh, no matter what you do, you know, looking to improve something rather than just, uh, just knock it off. Exactly right. And it's, it's innovation, it's, which isn't really a word you hear much in copywriting, but there's, there's, you know, bits of innovation everywhere you look. On top of that, I'd also add, um, never underestimate the checkout page. We, I've, mm. I've just been working with a great guy on his checkout pages and we've bumped it a fair few points. And that's, that's making a massive, massive difference financially and for the viability of the, of the funnel. I mean, the funnel was working good before, but now it's working great. Yeah. Yeah, and I yeah. think people, people, people don't really realize how important, important that checkout page is. It can literally make or break a promo. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you, um, uh, I don't think, a, uh, like for example, a, I don't think a, a Clickbank, um, checkout page is, is very customized. I think you just had a header. Um, and they, they just go from a beautiful fancy sales page and then, uh, or VSL, and and then they just end up on that uh, that checkout page, which is uh, looks fairly basic. So, um, so are you like embedding checkout pages and and putting testimonials and stuff around it, and making it look good? Is that kind yeah? Of I mean, why well, it depends. So the example I just gave, we we had very limited space for copy, kind of like what you're saying on ClickBank. It wasn't ClickBank; it was another service, yeah. but. Yeah, we made we we made just a few, literally, I think like three lines of copy, and it it bumped it significantly. And so, mm. um, and yeah, but like if I am able to to literally write the sales page and and create it instead of it being kind of you know on another website, then yeah, yeah, I will. In that point, someone's probably looking to buy unless they've skipped ahead. So what do they want? They want risk reversal, and they want to be pushed off the fence. So. Yeah, yeah, give them a great guarantee. Sell yeah, them, future yeah. pace them. Like this is going to work for you. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. 
And then finally, yeah, just push them off a fence. Uh, the way I love to do this is is essentially give them two options. You know, you don't you don't you don't buy this. This is what your life looks like. You buy this. It's all it's mm. all great. It's all uh, sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> Yeah, it's like the old. Uh, um, I was. Uh, uh, I don't remember which which event it was at, where um, you know the great and, and late and legendary Ted Nicholas was speaking. Um, mm. I think this was, was the one where I was late, and the only seat left in in the auditorium was next to him in the speakers area, for some reason, which is a whole other story. But uh, uh, he was speaking, and he he was talking about uh, all his direct mail promos that he'd written. Um, specifically with the order form. And he, and he took us through a whole thing with, with the order form, you know, how a um, two-page order form would, uh, would be to a double-sided order form. And you had to have at the top uh, the checkbox and then it said, yes, please rush me this course on blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then list out all the benefits again and, and, and the guarantee um, and the testimonials and all that. And like the, the credit card information was, uh, was on the second page. So, um, so exactly what you're saying there, resell them on, uh, on, and you know, that transfers over to the, to the online world. It resells them on the, on the decision they just made to click that, uh, add to cart button. It's highly, uh, yeah. And it, I mean, like I say, it's so important to, to focus on that. Your promo might not be a bomb. It might, it might actually be working just fine. And it's your yeah. checkout page, <laughs> which is the issue, but also test like everything is about testing now. So you don't know what's going to work really until you, until you put it out there. Yeah. Yeah. Testing is like, um, the closest thing uh, who said this, I think it was Matt Basak who said testing is the closest. No, I think it was Dan Ferrari who said uh, testing is the closest thing you've got to cheat codes. Um, yeah. It wouldn't so, surprise me if that yeah, was that, done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, that's one thing. That's why we we're using a platform called CD Split, you know, just with test pages and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, that's a very good point. You test the order page as well as the uh, as well as the sales page. So uh, you mentioned before um, we started this call that uh, uh, that you did some mentoring and uh, uh, that you were. Um, I don't think you didn't necessarily have any any places available, but I'm interested to find out about, uh, about uh, um, how people can learn more from you and, and learn more about you and stuff. Yeah, so the best way really is just to follow me or add me on Facebook and that's facebook.com forward slash Chris Wright O, O the letter. Unfortunately, I've got a very common name, so <laughs> I had to find something <laughs> to add on the end there. Um, but yeah, the best way really is that I, when I can, I, when I have time, I write up lessons, things that people can learn from. Um, I'm always open to talk to new people. I love hearing people's stories, how they're getting on. And, you know, if I can help in any way, I will. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, I'll put a link down in this episode on, uh, on geniuses of com as well. If, if you're listening on iTunes uh, or whatever they call it these days, um, <laughs> because uh, Chris is one of the, those guys who um, is just open and straight from the heart and and uh, willing to share his his experience and and but also you know um, getting a lot of great results that that ninety five percent of copywriters are probably jealous of. So um, so that's that's uh, something that I highly recommend you do connect with Chris on Facebook. Um, and you should probably start a, uh, a page or a Facebook group or something, Chris, because I'm sure that uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of smart people would dive in and, and learn uh, from you. I know that I would. Um, so find Chris on, on Facebook, Chris Wright O with an O on the end. Uh, uh, I'll post a link, as I said, on geniusofcopywriting.com. And uh, uh, it's a very good idea to go and connect with him. Uh, as, lo as long as you're going to, you know, uh, be serious and genuine and put uh, what he tells you into practice because that, that's one of the keys, uh, you know, um, not, not to just be uh, mm. that person who just uh, um, uh, doesn't provide any value, but the, the value that the Chris will have is, is seeing you get the results uh, from what he's talking about. So when he uh, creates that group, as I'm sure he will at some point, you know, join that as well. And uh, yeah, it should be very enlightening. 
Amazing. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks for that, Chris. Um, yeah, as I said, I'll post the link on your episode on geniusofcopywriting.com. Uh, thanks again for coming on it. It's uh, really been very interesting. Um, you know, uh, I've learned something myself as well, um, which is one of the uh, uh, aims that uh, I have for every guest on here. So uh, uh, I'm genuine when I say that you are a genius of copywriting and I look forward to uh, talking with you in the very near future. Thanks so much. Thanks, man. Thank you for listening to Geniuses of Copywriting with Brian Casagina. To get the full transcript and all the resources mentioned on today's show, go to www.geniusesofcopywriting.com now.